good morning welcome back to another weekly vlog i'm not feeling brilliant this morning um last night my like nose started getting all like stuffy and my eyes are really itchy my throat is all like scratchy and a bit sore um and yeah it still feels the same this morning so i don't know if hay fever's bad or if i've got a bit of a cold um but yeah i just don't feel brilliant um so i'm hoping well i'm hoping if it is a cold that it just quickly kind of runs its course and disappears my sister and my mum have both had colds um and they didn't last that long like only a few days so i'm hoping it's just the same as what they've had um but yeah it's just making me feel a bit rubbish on top of chronic illness um but yeah another monday i don't know where the weeks are going but we're nearly at the end of august which is just crazy um I don't have many plans this week really, it's a fairly quietish week at the moment. Um, I don't have anything on today so I'm just putting my weekly vlog up um, that should have gone up last week but I didn't get, quite get there. Um, and then I'm going to start editing um, another video. Um, and yeah, that's about as exciting as my day is getting um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, hopefully my mum's going to help me have a shower a bit later and get my hair washed. And that's that's my day. It's not going to be very exciting, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, don't really have any plans to go out anywhere this week. Um, with like my mum and dad have got kind of various things on on different days, um, so it's just not probably not going to happen this week with going anywhere. But then that's probably not a bad thing if I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Um, we've got Noah on Thursday this week. Um, so I don't know what we'll do with him, um, it's going to be slightly difficult because I've got a doctor's, well, I've got to go for an ECG at kind of lunchtime-ish, um, so we're hoping my sister will be back from work because she does a half day on a Thursday, um, so fingers crossed she'll be back, back from work in time so she can look after Noah, um, while I pop down and have my ECG, um, and then in the afternoon my dad has got to go to take my grandma to a hospital appointment so he's not going to be around for like a lot of the day anyway so I don't know quite what we're going to do it will depend on the weather as well we'd quite like to take him blackberry picking because there's loads of well he went yesterday with his mum and dad and loved it and there's loads of blackberries behind our house so if the weather's okay that might be an option but we're just we're just going to go with the flow this week and wait and see I think so I'm going to get on with doing this editing and everything and I'll talk to you later. Good morning. Sorry that I didn't speak to you again after I filmed yesterday morning and I'm in exactly the same place as when I spoke to you then. Um, my cold was just making me feel rubbish anyway. Um, I think because my like nose and sinuses are all stuffed up um, I ended up with a really bad headache. Um, and I just didn't really do an awful lot. I did a bit more editing, had some lunch. My mum helped me have a shower, which was a bit of a job in itself because I just don't have very much energy at the moment. And then I fell asleep on the sofa for quite a long time. So yeah, it was a bit of a a bit of a bleh day to be honest. Um, I'm still feeling a bit stuffed up and bleh. um. I was having like a bit of a panic yesterday because I don't know I think as soon as you get any kind of like sniffle or or anything at the moment your initial thought is going to be like oh god have I got covid do I need to get tested for covid and I was talking to a few people about this yesterday and I was like how how do you know like when you're meant to get tested and when it's just something that's not covid um and they kind of all said well do you have any of the like main symptoms of it and I was like well no um so they were like well then you don't need to be tested for it I haven't got a temperature I haven't got a cough um my taste and smell aren't affected or anything like that um and yeah what I've got is a stuffed up nose painful sinuses itchy eyes so at the moment we're going with a cold obviously if anything changed or if you know i got any new symptoms or whatever then i would go and get tested but 
I was just saying that it's going to be it's going to be weird like as like we're going to autumn and winter because obviously more and more people are going to be getting colds and coughs and things like that um, and you know my sister works in a nursery and she's already brought this one home um, and I don't know whether people are gonna ha like have to be a bit like over I can't think what the word is like testing every little sort of sniffle in case it's something that's kind of not just a sniffle um but it's going to make things interesting in like schools and stuff because obviously if one child gets ill um and they have to like self-isolate and be tested then everyone else that they're in close contact with will have to self-isolate until their test result comes back so yeah it's going to be it's going to be interesting i'm just hoping that they kind of improve testing a bit because obviously at the moment it's quite an intrusive like intrusive test having to like shove it right up your nose and down your throat I mean it's not the worst test I would have ever had but um you know especially for kids it's probably not going to be particularly nice for them um and also it takes a few days for the results to come back it would be really good obviously if you could just do a test whatever that test was and that same day you could get a result because then you know if it isn't covid all those people don't have to isolate um but yeah, it's going to be weird, I think, going into the autumn and winter. And it does make me nervous, kind of, obviously, with, like, the cold and flu season coming as well. If the COVID infection does get worse again, then how the health system is going to cope. Um, but yeah, it does, I mean, I was going to say there's nothing you can do about it. Obviously, there is. You can... Um, follow the guidelines and stuff but it's just I guess it's a worry for a lot of people um and you know people who've just started to get like their medical appointments back and all that kind of thing there's that like little niggle in the back of your head that they might get taken away again so yeah it was just it was just something I thought about yesterday and I was like I'm ignoring about whether like should I be tested or whatever and it's very difficult like I I was like looking on the NHS website and the Gov website and everything like that and I mean they all said you know if you've got a temperature, a persistent new cough um, or a t like change of sense of taste or smell then you should get tested but I'm like well so does that mean if you've got like a sniffly nose then that's okay there's not like there doesn't seem to be like proper it would be really good if there were like scenarios I think of like you know if this happens then do this and things like that because I was just I'm just a bit like am I doing the right thing um yeah I don't know but as, as I said if I get any new symptoms and the fact that my mum and sister have both had a cold as well and it's only lasted a few days kind of just makes me think that it's probably that um but yeah if anything changes I'll let you know uh, so yeah, another day. Um, I'm getting some more editing done. I'd like to try and finish editing my motability video today so that I can get that uploading. Um, apart from that, I don't have any plans again, so I need to try and be a little bit more productive than I was yesterday, hopefully. I don't feel quite so rubbish like I did yesterday, so hopefully, touch wood, um, I'll be able to get a little bit more done, but we'll see how we get on. It's very windy today. Um, which always worries me slightly because we're back onto woodland and the trees like you can see them like blowing some of them like look like they're really precarious and I'm always a bit like oh god what if one falls down or something but anyway um I'm rambling on I'm gonna get on with this editing and I will try and make sure I talk to you later today good evening as you can probably tell filming is going very well today um I managed to get my motability video finished and uploaded so I'm quite happy about that. Had lunch and then came in here and it was relatively early so I thought okay I will have a nap now and oh, excuse me that I'll wake up you know at a reasonable time and can get some bits done. Nope <laughs> that, did, that didn't happen. Um, I fell asleep and about three hours later I woke up so that went really well um I even set an alarm no slept through that as well so 
body. I'm so I'm just frustrated with this body at the moment and I don't know, sometimes it just needs sleep all the time and it's very, very frustrating. Um but anyway, that's what it that's what it is today, so there we go. Um I'm awake now and I've got my full sip to have, I've got the telly on, I'm watching the Yorkshire Vet, which is something I started watching last week and quite enjoyed, so I'm watching that again. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of Animal Crossing um, and then I've got a couple of bits that I want to get done, so I thought I'll play a bit of Animal Crossing first because I want to get on Able Sisters before it shuts. Um, and like these days I seem to not play until like later in the evening when the shops are shut which is kind of annoying so I thought I'd play that this bit earlier and then get on with my other bits so I shall play a bit of this and then I'll have another chat with you. So I've just finished playing Animal Crossing I always find I'm like oh, I'll just play it for like a few minutes and then a few minutes turns into half an hour and then yeah it just carries on but um yeah I've done that um, I'm now watching um, a programme called Inside Legoland um, which has been on for a few weeks and it's basically what it says on the tin about Inside Legoland and it's really making me want to go to Legoland. I haven't been to Legoland for, I actually can't remember the last time I went. I think it was when I was working at the school and that was like before 2012 so it's been a while. Um, but yeah, like I've been watching it and been like, oh, it would be so good to take like Noah and Maisie there. Possibly not Maisie quite yet, she might be a little bit too young, but certainly like Noah, I bet he would love it. Um, although to be quite honest, I'd be quite happy to just go without any children, just me and some other adults. But yeah, I know, it's really, really interesting. I love watching like stuff like that and seeing what goes on behind the scenes and stuff. So I'm watching that. And I've been sent a um, form, basically if you didn't watch my last, I don't know whether it was last week or the week before vlog, um, I had a phone call with Motability and they are referring me to um, a driving assessment centre. So basically you um, look at like different cars with different adaptations and stuff to try and work out what adaptations um, would kind of best suit your needs um, and so I've now been sent a form by the driving assessment centre which is called uh, Wessex Drivability. I think they've got like a variety of different centres. I think their main one is in Southampton but there's also one in Basingstoke and various other places um, and I've been sent a form to fill in um, which I then have to send back and then hopefully they'll get in touch and yeah, let me know an appointment. It does say um, that they have got a high demand currently and their centre is currently operating on an 11 week waiting time from receipt of your application form, so which means I need to get this done ASAP. Um, I'm just hoping it might be less than 11 weeks because I need to get my car <laughs> sorted. but. Yeah, obviously it'll be it'll be really helpful. Hopefully, um, so I just need to get this form filled in and get that sent off, and then hopefully I can get an appointment to go down there. I met him on a sunny day in late July, and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love, like standing in the middle of a barn. I don't know how you got there, but you hold tight Knowing that you can't get burned Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other Morning, happy Wednesday. I'm feeling a lot better cold-wise today, which is good. Um, it just mainly seems to be at night when I get really, like, blocked up, which is slightly frustrating when you're trying to sleep, but at least it's kind of better during the day, pretty much. Um... I don't know why, but today I feel really anxious. Um, I was like sitting eating my breakfast and I just feel like, I don't know, anyone with anxiety will know, like when you you just feel like something bad is gonna happen, but you don't know what you're like worrying about. Um, and I'm sitting there, I'm like trying to work out, like why do, why do I feel so anxious? And I'm, I really don't know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all good fun. Um, 
I had a call from Mobility this morning, the grants team. Um, I missed it, but we just phoned them back. Um, I phoned them back with my dad. And because Mark, I'm on ESA, but I'm on the income, no. I'm on, I think I'm on the contribution based one, not the income one. Basically the one that I'm on isn't the means tested one. So because it's not the means tested one, um, Motability need like bank statements from me because they have to like obviously test your, um, do like the means testing that way rather than if you if you if you're on like the means tested ESA like that basically tells them that you know you qualify so I need to sort out getting my bank statements um well I don't need to print them I can email them so that I can do that um I need to find social services at some point because I haven't been able to get hold of my social worker for like two weeks now and my parents are meant to be going away uh, towards the beginning of September and so I really need to get my PA slash carer sorted. So I found I've got a lady that you know wants to do it and everything um, and she can start on the 7th of September which is two days before my mum and dad go away and I think that's probably one of the things I'm getting anxious about is them going away only having had a carer for like the two days beforehand so things are still going to be quite new um and so yeah I think I am probably getting quite anxious about that and also just about the fact that I can't get hold of my social worker and we I need to sort of get, get the, the paperwork and everything sorted out so that my PA can actually start when she needs to start um and yeah she just hasn't replied to any messages so I don't know whether she's off sick or or something's happened or what but yeah, I need to find a number for social services and ring them and see if someone can help me because I'm just, yeah, I am getting quite anxious about it and I just want to make sure that everything is like set up and ready so that when she wants to, like when my carer wants to start, she can. Um, so yeah, I need to find a number. I don't quite know who I'm meant to ring, but I'll see who I can find and do that. So. I think, I don't know, I think things probably are making me feel anxious, like I think I'm feeling anxious probably about my motability thing and trying to get a bit of help with that and also trying to find the right car for me um, and also I'm feeling anxious about my mum and dad going away and, and having a carer and like getting my head around all that and stuff, um, so I don't know if it is just that that's kind of adding to my anxiety or whether... I would have anxiety anyway but um yeah it's just it's just frustrating and I don't like having I don't like having things kind of hanging over me you know when you're like waiting it's like in somebody else's hands and you're waiting for a decision I just I, I hate it I really do because it's obviously not in your control um but yeah so I've been kind of stressing about those things a bit this morning um, I've just promoted my motability video and I'm now going to start editing a weekly vlog. Um, I'd like to get a reasonable amount done today because I don't know how much I'll get done tomorrow. We've got Noah tomorrow um, and I've also got to go and have an ECG tomorrow. And then on Friday um, we've got the cropodist coming for my mum and dad and she does reflexology for me so I'm not quite sure how much I'll get done on Friday either and then on Saturday I really need to film some videos so I really need to get some stuff done today basically um, but yeah that's the plan we've got David, Emma and Maisie coming over well I think Emma and Maisie are coming over this afternoon David is working with my dad um, he's qualified as an electrician um, because he worked in the well he, he works in the West End doing sound and lighting but because of COVID, um, all of that work is currently not happening. So he has ended up qualifying as a an electrician because he obviously just needed something to fall back on. Um, so he's putting some, I don't know quite what he's doing, doing some sort of electrical work um, at our local scout hut and my dad's helping him with that. So I think he's doing that. Emma and Maisie are coming over this afternoon after they've been out with her mum. Um, and then 
David will obviously come home and then they're gonna stay for dinner. So that should be quite nice. I'm looking forward to seeing Maisie again and chatting to David and Emma. And yeah, that's about the sum of my day really. So I'm gonna get on with this editing and hopefully get a reasonable amount done before uh, Emma and Maisie get here. Please excuse me squinting. The sun has just come out. Um, it wasn't this sunny when I turned my camera on a second ago. Um, yeah, it is now the afternoon. Um, I got a bit of editing done this morning and then Emma and Maisie arrived. So I had my lunch and we were playing with Maisie. Um, she's been dancing and running around and chatting away. Bless her, she's very sweet. Hello, Biscuit. Um, and yeah, then she went down for a nap. So Emma and I just sort of chatted for a bit and now David's back here as well. Um, and they've got Maisie up and they're gonna give her her dinner in a little while. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I could do with having a bit of a rest, but I'm not sure, possibly at some point. Um, but I just thought I'd come out in the garden to show you um, the sunflowers. So in a vlog a while ago now, I can't remember when it was, um, Noah planted some sunflowers with us. Um, they came in like a little like package that was, um, I think it was from Waitrose and it was like a little like yellow tub and you could plant like these like mini sunflowers. So we planted them, weren't really sure how well they would do, but they started growing. So we then took them out of the yellow tub and potted them in some other pots because they needed a bigger pot. And in the last few days, they've just come alive. So I thought I'd show you what they look like. So here we go, these are our, I think they're miniature sunflowers because obviously they're not as big as not proper big sunflowers. We've even got a bee on this one, which is nice. I think we've got at least four in there. And then if you can see right there, there's some over there. And I think we've got some in another pot as well, but these are the ones that have kind of come out first. And they're looking really good. I'm really impressed actually with how many of them have actually come out because I've tried to grow sunflowers before and they have just been eaten. So I think we've done pretty well with these. I'm very impressed. And then we've also got some random tomatoes <laughs> growing, which we didn't try and grow this year. They were just kind of behind a load of stuff in the garden and we noticed that they started growing. So I'm not sure when they got planted, um, but they are starting to turn those ones actually look nearly ready to come off actually they're still quite orange so i'm not sure if they're quite there yet but we've literally got loads on this <laughs> on this plant i'm not a fan of tomatoes i have to say oh, we've got some there that have fallen off maybe we need to pick them um yeah i'm not a fan of tomatoes so i'm not going to be able to try these and see what they're like but my dad and my sister like them so they can give them a go but yeah somehow we've managed to grow tomatoes <laughs> Good evening. David, Emma and Maisie have gone home now. Um, I had a bit of a nap while they were having dinner because I usually have my main meals at lunchtime and then have a full sip in the evening because that's what my digestive system seems to manage best. Um, and yeah, they headed home. Um, I've just been watching a bit of TV and I am going to order a different kind of face mask. Um, if you've been watching my vlogs for a little while, you'll know that I have been struggling to find a face mask that I can breathe in and not either struggle for breath or the one that triggers my pots and makes me feel really faint. Um, I've tried various different fabric face masks, um, the sort of like, uh, medical not medical like the surgical like paper face masks um what else have i tried i've got a mask from Screwfix, which has got a valve on it at the moment which is the only one that i have kind of managed to kind of wear like not like not too bad um although it's obviously not ideal because it's got a valve um and yeah, I've just been, I've just been struggling to find something. I'm technically, I could be exempt, but I want to find something that I can wear because I just would prefer to wear a mask. Um, and I've had a few recommendations from friends. Um, some friends recommended um, Vogue masks, but they're impossible to get at the moment. Um, I don't think they're selling them at all in the UK. 
Um, some people have been recommended the Cambridge masks, um, which you can currently pre-order, but there's been a lot of comments of like delay, like a lot of delays in the orders and um, just a lot of people seem to be having a lot of problems at the moment. So I'm kind of hesitant to spend money on something that I don't know like when it will like will arrive because I need it kind of as soon as possible. <laughs> um, and then another friend recommended, um, actually a couple of people have recommended a mask from a company called Breathe Happy. Um, and so I thought I might try that one. It looks a bit different from other masks. Um, so I was a bit like hesitant at first because I was like, oh, it looks a bit, it looks a bit funny. And I don't know whether people will kind of, I don't know, look at me funny, but actually it really doesn't matter if it works. Um, so I thought I'd just show you the website and then obviously I'll show you when it gets here and let you know how I get on with it and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just really hoping that this one will be the one that I can, <laughs> I can breathe in and wear because I've got to go up to London next month um, to see my leg surgeon. So I need to find something that I can wear for like a prolonged period of time. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that this will be the one. Okay, so this is what the website looks like. I will link it below so that you can check it out if you want to. Um, and these are what the masks look like. Um, as I said, they look, <laughs> they do look slightly different. They look, make you look a little bit like Darth Vader, I think. Um, they're silicon. Well, they've got two different ones. So they've got the everyday one, which is for general wear and it is around 95% efficient um, and then they've got the commuter one which is 98% efficient and I think I would get the commuter one um, so the everyday one is 19.99 and then the commuter one is 24.99 um, and I think it filters so it filters both what comes in but also what goes out so it kind of protects you as well as other people um, and basically it has like these i don't know whether it's got a picture of it kind of broken down a bit okay here we go so it's got these filters that you put in it and i think they are okay they work like they work for a week and then you have to take that filter out and then put another filter in um so although you are changing the filter it's obviously a lot better than having a new mask every time you have to wear one and then chucking it out um and yeah, they come in, you can buy like different filters and things like that. I'm just trying to see if there's any. Oh, and then if you obviously like, cause you're wearing it all the time, you need to sterilize it. So you can like take it apart. Um, and then I think you just boil it, uh, sanitize or boil your mask to keep it in tip top condition ready for use at any time. So I think most people just boil it in like hot water um after each use so i think you take the filter out beforehand um and you're also meant to sterilize it before you use it as well um and then it's got the let's see if i can show you here we go what's in the box let's see if it shows it in here yeah so it comes in like different parts um, so you've got like the main mask, the filter casing for the back, the filter casing for the front, the strap, and then uh, a couple of filters as well. I don't know whether I need to buy, I probably need to buy some more filters to go with it. Um, and yeah, so these bits don't go around your ears. It kind of goes around the back of your head, which I think I kind of would much prefer because... I just don't get on that well with ones that go around my ears because I seem to have really bendy ears and they uh, just end up falling off my ears. Um, but yeah, so this is the mask that I am going to go for. Well, actually not this one because this is the everyday. I'm going to go for the commuter one, I think. Um, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Obviously, it's a bit more of an expensive investment than a sort of fabric one or something like that but I just feel like I've tried the cheaper options and nothing is working um and so this is kind of my next <laughs> my next thing so we'll give it a go um 
I will show you it when it arrives and I'll let you know how I get on with it. Good morning, it's Thursday today. We have got Noah. Um, I've been up fairly early. Um, he and my mum came and woke me up and he always wakes me up by tickling me, so I know it's him. Um, but yeah, we sat down and had breakfast together and then my mum took Noah um, out into the woods or the forest as he calls it um, to go blackberry picking because he absolutely loved it last time they went um, and has been asking to do it again so we thought it was a good activity that they could do I couldn't go with them because um, they have to go like out the back gate well there are other places to go but it needed to be somewhere like reasonably quick um, and the way that they were going to go, I can't get my wheelchair down, so I couldn't go. He was like asking me, he was like, Jenny, are you coming? And I had to explain that I can't get my wheelchair down there, so that was a bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, I've just been getting dressed and also just doing some admin bits. I needed to get some details for a form that I'm filling in for... Is it mutability? No, it's for the driving assessment. I had to get a form... Um, no, I didn't have to get a form. I had to get some details from my medical folder to fill in for that. So I've just been <laughs> wading through my medical folder. It needs a big sort out because it's just getting way too big. I can't keep up with it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think they've been up blackberry picking. I think they're probably back now. I think I heard them come in. Um, so I'm going to head downstairs. Um, my mum is taking me to the doctors in a little while because I've got to go and have an ECG and have my blood pressure checked. Um, we're hoping that Rebecca will be back from work in time for, like, for us to go out. She works a half day today um, and she finishes at one and I think my appointment's at half past one. So we're hoping that she can get home in time to sit with Noah so that we don't have to take Noah down with us as well. That's the theory, we'll see if it works, um, but that's the plan. And then I think we'll probably put Noah down for a nap this afternoon because he won't have had one this morning. So I'm hoping that that'll mean I can get a little bit of time to get some editing done because I didn't get much done yesterday. So yeah, that's the plan, I feel a bit out of breath. <laughs> um, that's the plan, we'll see if it works, but yeah, I'm gonna head down now, find out all about their blackberry picking and play with Noah until I have to go out. So I'm just in the Peppa, Peppa Pig room with Noah, as he calls it. Noah, did you go out with Nanny this morning? And pick some blackberries. You picked some blackberries? Yeah. How many did you pick? I didn't pick red ones. No, what colour did you have to wait? What colour do they have to be? Yeah. They have to be black, that's right. And did you eat any? Fun. Did you? Yeah. Was it nice? Yeah. <gasps> Was it? Yeah. We're here. Oh, let's get some ice cream. Oh. This is not ice cream. That's not ice cream. That's a baby. Oh, it's the ice cream. Oh. You're going to fall out. What, what fell out? Big bits said that. What have I? Of ice cream? Yeah. Was that when you were on your holiday? Yes. Oh dear. Did it fall on the floor? No. Where did it fall? It falls on my chair. On your chair? And I was eating. Oh biscuits. no. You were eating biscuits as well on your holiday? Yeah. Where did you go on your holiday? And then it was a big and it falls out. Oh dear. Can you eat the biscuit? Okay, what? I have to eat this? this? Yeah. Just stick it, look, yeah. Just stick it. Eat it. I'm not licking her head. <laughs> right, Noah is just finishing his lunch um, with Becca. She's got home now. And then I think he's going to go down for a nap. And my mum's just taking me down to the doctor's surgery for my ECG and blood pressure check. <laughs> We're moving. Um, because I have to have these done every three months because of the medication that I'm on. Let me hold that. Thank you. Um... So yeah, I'm going to go down, hopefully you don't have to wait too long, um, and then I'll come back and have a bit of lunch. I look in the mirror, who's looking back at me? I don't know what happened, guess we weren't meant to be. I know we had problems. We could fix them. Right, 
I'm done, back in the car. I uh, had to wait a little while because someone else was using the ECG machine, so that took a little bit of time. Um, but she did my blood pressure lying down, which was a bit low on for me. Um, now that I'm on Midadrine, my blood pressure tends to be not too bad, but it wasn't like ridiculously low, but it was just a bit on the low side, like compared to what it normally is. Um, and then she did the ECG and then did my blood pressure standing. Um, which again was a bit on the low side for me, but it's not too bad. Um, and then my GP is actually there at the moment, so she took the ECG in to show her. Um, apparently she was actually on the phone, but she sort of had a quick look over it and said it was fine for me to go. Um, and that she would get in touch with me later or something. So I think, I don't know whether that's just because um, she needed the ECG to then refer me for the echo like echocardiogram which is a scan of my heart um so yeah i think i don't know whether she'll just let me know that she's doing that or something i don't think there was anything wrong with the ecg um and yeah we're done i uh, yeah when i went in i went to put some hand gel on my hands and i like pushed the thing down and the hand gel like squirted across <laughs> at me um and went all over my crutches and everything so that was that was fun and I always find like because I have to like rest my crutches somewhere so, like next to me so that I can like rub the hand gel in and you've got people behind you who are waiting and they like they like stand there and like roll their eyes and tut and I'm like I'm sorry I can't go and put hand gel on at the same time like this is what happens when you're disabled you can't do it um but people just don't seem to want to wait which is slightly annoying anyway that's done for another three months hopefully so now we're gonna head home so i can have some lunch right i've had my lunch a little noah's up from his nap and we are back in the peppa pig room again and we're gonna play with the trains aren't we yeah yeah so should we make this one first so can you whistle this oh you want me to whistle yeah let me whistle uh <laughs> train's coming you play yours. Oh, well done. <laughs> well, that sounds fun, doesn't it? Right, would you like me to build the train track for you? Yes. Yeah, what's the magic word? Please. Okay. All right, how do we put this together then? Well, that doesn't work, does it? Oh, no. Let's try this one. There we go. That's much better. I'm not sure if Jenny's very good at this, but we'll give it a try. We got tired. There's nothing left to do but to say goodbye and try to move on. I'll get over you. Only wish that I knew how to go on. Right, we'll dis that'll do. <laughs> oh, you're gonna put those in? So, let's go in. Why not? Can you pop it in? Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. Goes in like that. There we go. And then do you want me to put the other one in, or can you do it? Oh, there isn't anywhere else for it to go. Yeah. Where's the other bit of track then? That... Oh no, look, here. You can go here. Yeah. Do you want me to do it or can you do it? Don't you do it. There we go. Oh, it's all ready now. Are you going to put your train on it? Right, should we read the Gruffalo's Child? You love this book, don't you? Are you can hold the pages for me. There we go. So it's called The Gruffalo's Child. The Gruffalo said that no Gruffalo should ever set foot in the deep dark wood. Why not? Why not? Because if you do, the big bad mouse will be after you. I met him once, said the Gruffalo. I met him a long, 
long time ago. What does he look like? Tell us, Dad. Is he terribly big and terribly bad? His eyes are like pools of terrible fire and his terrible whiskers are... What are his whiskers? Tougher than wire. Tougher than wire. Aha! Uh -huh. What comes next? Oh, hi. What? Oh, a trail in the... Come on, talk. <laughs> you want me to do it? Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, ho! A trail in the snow. Whose is this trail and where does it go? A tail poked out of a log pile house. <gasps> Could this be the tale of the big, bad mouse? Do you think it is? No. What do you think it, it is? A snake. It's a snake. Two eyes gleamed out of a treetop house. <gasps> Could these be the eyes of the big, bad mouse? Are these the eyes of the big, bad mouse? No, it's an owl. Oh, silly owl. His ears are enormous and over his shoulder. He carries a nut as big as a boulder. Who is it? It's a shadow. Oh. What is it? It's the shadow of the mouse, isn't it? But the Gruffalo thinks it's the big bad mouse. It's a big bad nose. <gasps> a big bad nose? Yeah. Oh. The big bad mouse, yelled the Gruffalo's child. The mouse jumped down from the twig and smiled. And the Gruffalo snored and snored and snored. The end. Good morning. Sorry that I didn't film anything again yesterday after I was reading the story with Noah. Um, he went home and I was absolutely shattered so I fell asleep on the sofa for quite a while and then yeah the end of the day <laughs> was there already. Um, yeah had a good time with him yesterday he seemed to be in good spirits which was good. We were kind of asking him about his holiday but the only thing that he could tell us was that he'd had an ice cream and part of the cone had fallen off onto his chair so yeah I think that might be the lasting memory of his little holiday to Cornwall um, but no it was really nice to see him again so that was good. Um, I have had reflexology this morning which was so good. I haven't had it since before lockdown because obviously it wasn't an essential kind of service um, and I think before lockdown I'd only had it a couple of times because of having my operation so it was really nice to get back to it and just the lady comes to our house to do my mum and dad's um, feet and then she does my reflexology and it was very relaxing. I did nearly fall asleep so it was obviously good. Um, so yeah, yesterday I had a call from the duty team at Adult Services. I can't remember if I've mentioned on here before but um, basically I've been struggling to get hold of my caseworker for the last couple of weeks and we had we were kind of like nearly at the point of like getting um, my direct payments and everything sorted out so that my carer can start in September um, and then yeah I just stopped getting any like responses to emails and stuff so I rang adult services not yesterday but the day before and um, that just went through to like the call centre type place and they said that they would um, pass it on to somebody and get them to ring me so yesterday duty, uh, the duty team rang me and um, <clears throat> they looked at my file and everything and said oh your casework is not going to be um, back until the 15th of September so I was like okay maybe something's happened I don't know I'm not I'm not judging on that front um, <clears throat> but yeah they said oh she won't be back till the 15th of September can things wait until then and I was like well not really because my parents are going away um, sort of second week of September and I need a carer <laughs> I need some help um so they kind of went okay fine where where are things so I tried to like update them to where we'd got to they don't seem to have the last email that my caseworker sent me on record so I had to read them that um 
and yeah so basically I said look I, I had been approved for the these hours I'd been approved for direct payments it was literally just a case of um, referring me to this trust that were going to help me with managing um, the account as an employer and um, yeah setting up the direct payments and getting started and also I then mentioned that when my parents were away um, my caseworker had said that I should be able to get a few extra hours just to help like cover stuff that they usually do um, and so the lady then kind of said to me well what what extra hours do you need like what extra help do you need so I said well um, I'm really gonna like the main things I'm gonna need help with are like getting my breakfast and getting my lunch dinner shouldn't be a problem because I usually have a full to sip and also my sisters will be back from work then um, but yeah just things like getting plates and bowls out and um, carrying stuff um, I'm gonna need help with um, and the lady said oh um, we don't usually allocate hours for needing help with meals and I'm like what <laughs> I I had never realised that that was a thing and I spoke about it on my personal Facebook because I've got quite a few friends who have um, PAs and carers and apparently like a lot of um, like social services places don't allocate hours for helping with meal times so I'm like well what is a disabled person meant to do like are they meant to just starve <laughs> like what what do you do if you can't if you can't cook like or if you need help with cooking or carrying and things like that what what are you meant to do um and my friend or my other friend said that um her social services don't offer any hours for things like cleaning or um doing like washing and things like that you're expected to pay for um a cleaner which i think i just i just was i just think it's madness like it's not that you don't want to clean or cook or do your washing it's that you you physically can't do it and you need help and you don't have a huge amount of money as um well i, I was going to say you don't have a huge amount of money as a disabled person that's a massive generalization because a lot of disabled people can work and do very well for themselves but there are also a lot of disabled people who can't work and who are really really struggling and to then expect them to pay for a carer uh, for you know a cleaner to come in and clean and i don't even know what you're meant to do about meal times because who <laughs> who do you call to help you with meals i really i really don't know um not a lot shocks me these days with regards to disability and the way people with dis disabilities are treated but i was really shocked yesterday to find out that that help just isn't there um it just baffles me it really does i just i don't understand what people are meant to do um but the lady did say she said oh as it's only for a week we might be able to justify um giving you those out hour, extra hours and i was like okay or <laughs> do i just say i need them for something else and then you give them to me anyway i really don't know um but yeah so she said she's gonna have to go and talk to somebody because she said oh um she said oh it's it'll be it's going to be hard for us to get things sorted because we don't really know your case it would be better if it was your caseworker and I'm like well yeah obviously it would but I don't know where my caseworker is and they haven't um they didn't tell me they were going or anything so um I can't my caseworker can't do it so I need them to help me so I'm feeling a little bit stressed at the moment because I'm just really worried that they're going to come back to me and say that they can't get things sorted um and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do when my parents go away if I haven't got any kind of care help. So yeah, I'm I'm slightly stressed at the moment to be honest. I didn't think it would be this difficult. I just I just assumed that it, you know, all they needed to do was put in the extra hours, refer me to the trust to sort out employment and then start the direct payments on the right day. Like I didn't I didn't think it would be that difficult, but apparently it is. And I've spoken to quite a lot of my friends and they just said welcome to the care system apparently this is what it's like so i'm slightly frustrated um i mean i i still i i feel bad moaning about these things because obviously i feel very grateful that there is any help out there but 
you know, I'm having to contribute to my care costs. It's not like they're being paid in full or anything like that. I mean, yes, it's great that I don't have to pay the full amount, but I am still having to pay towards them. And also it's not like it's a luxury. It's not, it's not something that I'm like, oh, I just fancy a carer because I can't be bothered to do stuff. It's like, this is, this is what I need because I'm disabled. It's not, it's not a choice. And it, it just, I don't know, it's like, I, th I just think the whole system is is not set up for the needs of disabled people properly if, if they can't get help with basic things like food and washing. I mean, I mean like washing clothes, so you can get help with washing yourself. I just, yeah, really, really baffled me. So, yeah, I, I'm just hoping that I will hear from them and that they will say that they've been able to get it all sorted and set up because... I've got I've got a lady waiting to start a job in September and at the moment like she might not have work either so it's not just me that gets affected by this it's her so yeah as you can tell I'm a little bit stressed um but anyway I'm just going to try and concentrate on other things for today so I'm going to get on with editing a weekly vlog I desperately need to get some stuff done today because I haven't didn't get anything done yesterday I didn't really get much done the day before I need to film tomorrow so yeah this is kind of my day of trying to just get this editing done so I'm gonna get on with that and stop ranting um, and I'll speak to you later. I'm quite happy with myself because I pretty much managed to get a whole weekly vlog edited in one morning this morning Um it was yeah I, I kind of really well I wanted to do it but I didn't think I'd be able to get it done um, but somehow I managed to get the whole thing edited so that is now exporting I'll either put it up on Sunday or Monday I haven't decided yet um, but it just means I can film tomorrow and not worry that I have editing to do still um, I've just had my lunch and I thought I would show you um, what I had because I showed you sorry I haven't got a crutch so I'm like holding on to the fridge um, yeah I showed you the other pasta that I had and said that I would tell you what I thought of this one um, so I had this pasta which is the Jamie Oliver butternut squash tortelloni I don't know what the difference between tortelloni and tortellini are but it looks a little bit like that and yep this one was just as good as the spinach and ricotta ravioli um, I just served it with uh, some melted butter and some parmesan, not the healthiest thing, but it tasted good. Um, and yeah, it was really nice. It's just um, butternut squash with, I think it's said with a herby sauce or something, and it tasted really nice because it's kind of like sweet um, from the butternut squash, and yeah, really, really good. So if you're a pasta lover, definitely check out that one. I've got one more one more to try from that range, which is, I think it's a carbonara one. Um, but yeah, they're really good because they last quite a long time. So we can't get them in our local um, like supermarket. So my mum had to get them from the big Tesco's when she went. Um, and it just means that they're not going to kind of go off really quickly because I can't eat them very quickly. Um, I mean, you don't eat the Well, I wouldn't eat the whole packet anyway. I'd split it in half. Um, and yeah, it just means I've got easy meals um, and they, I think they're going to be really good for when my mum and dad go away because if I can get some help with a carer, it will literally just be like boiling the water, heating the pasta and then it's done. It's not too much work. So yeah, I'm glad that I like another one of those. I am now going to go and have a bit of a rest. I managed to like fall over this morning. Well, no, it was at lunchtime. Um, my dad kind of picked up the pan um, of water that had started boiling because he needed to put some more in it um, and as he picked it up the water kind of splashed over me and it was it thankfully it hadn't boiled but it was hot so it went over my hand and down my leg and I think it kind of shocked me a bit and I turned around to go to like to go to the sink and I'm not quite sure what happened my I don't know whether I caught my foot or I just lost my footing but I kind of slipped and um, sort of fell into the side of the, what do you call it, work surface. Um, thankfully the work surface was, where, was there otherwise I would have ended up on the floor. Um, but yeah I kind of went down on my bad leg and 
hurt my knee, which is already a problem. Um, and so it's kind of the first thing that if I go down on my leg quickly, that's the first thing that will hurt. So that wasn't great. So I'm going to go and put my feet up, go and have a little rest. My mum's just popped out to Waitrose to do the weekend shop. And then when she gets back, she's going to help me have a shower and wash my hair. So I'm going to get a rest in um, before that so that I've got a bit of energy to uh, get through that. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I am having a filming day today. Um, I need to get two videos filmed and... I'm not feeling very motivated at the moment, to be quite honest. Um, but I finally got myself set up. I've forgotten to bring another uh, top downstairs to change into for my second video. So I'm doing well today. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can get these two videos filmed and then I'm set for another couple of weeks. My sister went to um, McDonald's, well, she went to the shops this morning to get some trousers for work. Um, and she went quite early and she brought home a McDonald's breakfast and she brought me home a hash brown. So I was very happy about that. Um, I don't ever go out for McDonald's breakfasts, but I do really like their hash browns. So that was really sweet of her to bring one back for me. I'm also wearing jeans for the first time today since I had my operation, um, which for me it's very exciting. Um, I didn't wear them to begin with because my wounds were too sore and jeans kind of weren't really very comfortable and also because my leg was so swollen it wouldn't fit into my jeans. Um, and then I haven't really worn them since because it then was summer and it wasn't really jeans weather. But today, it, well for the last few days it has felt quite autumnal and I've kind of missed having jeans. Like I have, when I was, um, because I had my operation in November um, and obviously it was like winter and stuff but I just wore tracksuit bottoms but I never really felt quite myself because I like to wear jeans, they're kind of my thing. Um, so yeah, I thought this morning I was like, right, I'm gonna see if they fit. They're not proper jeans, they're jeggings so they are still quite like stretchy and soft but I managed to get them on and I'm really happy and I also managed to put my own socks on which I know it probably sounds ridiculous, but I haven't been able to put my own socks on since like when I had my operation, so little wins. Um, I did choose a pair of socks that I knew were really easy to get on, so I'm not sure how I'll get on with some of my other socks. Because my feet and legs are swollen, it's quite difficult to get them on anyway. But I did manage to get this pair on today, so I'm quite happy about that. Little wins, isn't it, when you've uh, got a disability or a chronic illness, it's just trying to find the little little positives. So anyway, I'm in my jeans and my socks and my Mickey Mouse jumper with the rainbow. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get these two videos filmed, hopefully before lunch. What if I would tell you that things don't happen once they always come back what if I... So I managed to get my two videos filmed this morning. It took a bit longer than I had planned. It always does. I think I just underestimate the length of time it takes to film the videos. Um, but I got them done, I had some lunch, and I've got a couple of bits of post that I thought I'd open and show you um, before I go and have a bit of a lie down because I'm absolutely shattered. Um, so, yeah. I'll let you know what they are. I'm gonna open this one first, which is the little one, and I'll show you what's inside. Throw us back to the very moment when we had our luck. Suddenly it's clear to me you're all I Okay, so I mentioned earlier in the week that I was ordering a new face mask to try out because I I've just been struggling to find one that I can wear and breathe in with asthma and POTS. Um, and this one was recommended to me by a couple of friends. Um, and so I thought I'd give it a go. So it is called the Breathe Happy. Um, I went for the commuter mask, although they do also do an everyday mask. And this is what it looks like. It comes in a box. It was a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, actually. I thought it was, I don't know why, I thought it would be a bigger box. Um, but, I don't know, <laughs> have a look inside and see, I think it all comes like separate and you have to like put it together, um, 
and this one has got a 98% efficient respirator face mask um, includes five replaceable filters so it should last you for 35 days reusable affordable safe and comfortable protects you your pocket and the environment so here we go looks a bit like this <laughs> i mean it does look a bit funny but it kind of this is how you wear it <laughs> mum's laughing at me um <clears throat> and then it's got the straps that go around your head and then the filters and everything that you need to kind of put together but yeah it's quite and you get a little protective pouch as well it is quite soft actually quite comfortable I don't obviously know what it would be like once the filters are in, but it does feel quite like easy to breathe through. So I'm hoping <laughs> it might be all right. I don't know what it would be like when it's really hot because I don't know if this would get like really sweaty, but you know, whatever mask you're going to wear, I think is going to get sweaty. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'll be interested to try it. <laughs> I mean, you do look a bit funny, but you know if it works then i'm happy um so what i'll do is i'll put it all together at some point and then obviously give it a try um and i'll kind of update you probably on a weekly vlog again about how i'm getting on with it at some point i might do um a what do you call it or like a blog post about some of the different masks i've tried and what i found helpful um but yeah obviously i need to kind of give it a good try first before i can comment okay and then this next parcel I wasn't really sure whether to show it because I don't know if I ever buy something that's kind of on the more expensive side I feel like embarrassed I don't know do I feel if I feel embarrassed or guilty or, or what it is about showing it on here because you know I think it's because because I'm on benefits I feel like I shouldn't have things that are like more expensive and I don't know why that is, and it's it's silly because obviously, you know, your benefits are to spend on things that you need or want, and people are going to spend them on different amounts. Um, but I just, I don't know, I do feel a bit funny about showing stuff like this sometimes. Um, but I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to be honest, and, you know, this is something that I have probably been saving for... For about a year i would say um and yeah i just i thought I'd, i wanted to show you because it's something that i've saved up for and it, it's something that will hopefully help me a lot so i'm going to open it and i'm going to show you what it is wanted, can't you see got to follow through in a game for two it ain't the way i want it got to follow through So basically the story behind this is I got my first iPad in 2012 when I was in hospital for a long time over the summer and wanted something that I could use to go on the internet, to watch videos, to write on, all that sort of stuff. And that iPad I've had until today, I still use it. Um, so it's eight years old now and over the last year it's got to the point where it is just becoming a lot more difficult to use so it has very little storage I think it's 12 gig of storage um, and it is becoming more and more difficult to kind of have anything on it because it's just not like even if you have like a couple of apps they pretty much take up the whole storage um, and also because the um, iPad and the operating system are so old, a lot of apps won't work on it anymore. So um, YouTube doesn't work on it anymore. I have to try and download the oldest version of YouTube that it will take. Um, and at the moment, I'm having to do that every couple of days because it like uploads it. And then after a couple of days, it decides, no, this isn't you can't have this YouTube anymore, you need to delete it and update it, and yeah, yeah it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, 
can't really do an awful lot on it it's just not got a huge amount of functionality anymore so yeah about a year ago i thought do you know what i'm going to start saving for a new ipad because it would just hopefully make my life a lot easier it's something that's a lot lighter than a laptop i do have a laptop that i got when i was at college i think um and I do use that, but it's quite heavy and I can struggle quite a lot with like holding it, especially when my leg was really bad, trying to like hold it while I'm on the sofa or in bed or something like that. Um, and an iPad would be a lot easier because it's a lot lighter and things like that. So I feel like I'm trying to justify it, but these, these are my reasons for the fact that I wanted to replace it. And so I've saved for about a year because I wanted to make sure that I got kind of the right like make and model and stuff that would kind of do what I wanted it to do and so yeah a couple of days ago I finally got around to ordering it so I have gone for it's the iPad Pro 11 inch second generation with Wi-Fi and it is 128 gig which is just crazy when you think that my current iPad is 12 gig um, this has got like over 10 times the amount of storage um, and yeah, I haven't had a new iPad for eight years. And I know that, you know, this is a luxury and, you know, I could be using it for, I could have saved up that money for something different, but it's something, as I said, that I've been wanting to save, well, I've been saving for, for at least a year and have been wanting to save for even longer. And yeah, it just got to a point where it was the right time someone's at the door right time to get it so yeah I ordered this and then I also made sure that I had saved up enough as well to be able to get the um pencil to go with it because that might be easier in some respects with like writing and stuff like that and also doing drawing and things like that so yes I'm very much looking forward to trying out my new iPad and pencil I will probably tell you a little bit more about them in the weekly vlog once I've got them all set up and stuff but yeah really looking forward to using those good morning I didn't sleep particularly well last night um I was having like really weird not very nice dreams which kind of I guess didn't help um but I woke up twice like shivering and shaking because I was so blooming cold um the first time I woke up I turned my electric blanket on and that seemed to help kind of send me back to sleep again but then a bit later I woke up again and so I ended up getting out of bed and going and finding a jumper to put on because I just couldn't warm myself up um, which is crazy because I was watching the weather forecast last night and they said that um, the bank holiday which is tomorrow um, that's this time last year it was like 33 degrees and it was like the hottest bank holiday for I don't know how many years um, and then they said yeah this year is probably going to be the coldest bank holiday for so many years so it's just interesting how things change isn't it but yeah I was I was not very warm so I'm going to find myself some warmer pyjamas to wear tonight in the hope that that might help and yeah we're at the end of another week I have done all my usual Sunday morning bits of having breakfast and getting my medication ready and all that kind of stuff and I'm now going to do a little bit of tidying I'm just going to carry on where I left off last week um, doing my bookshelf with all my folders in it I asked um, on, I think it was on Instagram what people had done with all their like uni notes and stuff and the overwhelming majority said that they had thrown them away um some people had kind of kept them for a few years like i have and then just decided that you know there was not a lot of point in keeping them so had chucked them so i think that's what i'm going to do with mine it's a bit i don't know you look at them all and you think god i spent like three years working on all those notes and they're just going in the bin but I guess like the end result was to get the degree and I've got the degree and I'm probably not going to need to sit back and look through like endless notes that I took in classes so yeah I'm going to be ruthless and I'm going to chuck them because there's just no point in them sitting there so that's what I'm carrying on with today I've got Secret Life of the Zoo on TV um, and yeah just going to get on doing this until lunchtime When I think about the way we used to be
tired it's because I am um I was just about to head off to bed and realized that I hadn't actually finished this vlog so I thought I'd just pop on and say goodbye and yeah <laughs> finish everything um I managed to get a little bit of tidying and sorting done this morning um I went through like all my uni stuff and got rid of a lot of that um and also found like all of my like mental health paperwork and stuff like going right back to um when I was like a teenager and um went into hospital and all that kind of stuff which was it was strange to look through there's a lot of a lot of memories attached to that stuff um and yeah I've kept a fair amount of it because a lot of it was like letters and reports and I don't know I just felt like it was important to keep but there was also little bits that I'd kind of written while I was in there and stuff and yeah I just I don't know I wanted to keep them to kind of see what things were like back then and hopefully how far I've come um so yeah I got a decent amount done so I was quite happy with that and then this afternoon I've just mainly been sleeping to be quite honest I feel absolutely shattered today I think it's probably because I didn't sleep that well last night so I'm hoping tonight I might sleep a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. I'm sorry it's been a lot of just me talking um, and that I haven't really done anything massively exciting, but I hope you've still enjoyed it. If you have and you'd like to see more from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell, that means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment, let me know if there's anything that you want to comment on in the vlog or anything else and let me know how you're doing, how you're coping at the moment, what you're getting up to and also let me know if there's any particular videos you'd like to see me do, um, whether they're about disability, mental health, physical health, uh, fashion, beauty, Disney or anything else you can possibly think of, do let me know because I'm always looking for suggestions and it's good to hear what kind of things you would like to see. And come and follow me on social media. My links are in the description below, but I'll pop my Instagram and Twitter up here. Those are the two that I'm mainly on, so do come over and say hello and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!